Normally on this channel, I go over coding interviews, but something I wanted to talk about today are take-home projects. Take-home projects are pretty standard now when you're interviewing at small to medium-sized tech companies for software engineering roles. And depending on whatever role you're applying for, you will likely have to do a project that involves writing an API, writing an algorithm, creating a user interface, or even writing a mobile app. Love them or hate them, take home projects are definitely here to stay and that is why I'm gonna give you six tips to ace the take home project. Tip number one is to get your environment set up before starting. Many of these projects have a max time limit ranging from several hours to several days. And the trigger to start the project could be from you know an email from the recruiter or it could be a actual timer on the company's platform. Regardless of the timeline, make sure you have everything you're going to need to finish the project set up before you start whatever timer is going to occur. For example, let's say you are given a task that is going to involve writing code in Python, make sure you have, you know, virtual environment set up, obviously Python set up with whatever version that they want, and then all of the installation packages that you think you're gonna need beforehand. Imagine you have a two hour time limit and in the middle of it, you need to brew install something, but before that happens, brew needs to update. And as you know, that would take forever. Tip number two is to triple check any instructions and code that you provide. Projects that companies give can be as broad or as narrow as they want them to be. A broad example would be, I want you to develop an API for me that will return random facts. No language, no framework, storage specifics, nothing. A narrow example would be, I want you to develop an API for me that returns random facts using the Python programming language with the Flask framework and using Postgres as your database. In the scenario that the assignment leans more broad, you're likely going to have to provide more instructions as to how to set everything up. These instructions that you provide could be in a readme or it can be an email that you send back to the recruiter or whoever you're in contact with. And these instructions should be very in depth going over how to build, run, and test your code. Spend a lot of time ensuring that the code you provide will 100% work for anyone that is testing it. If any one of the engineers are trying to set up your project and they can't get it set up because maybe you didn't provide enough instructions, you're likely going to be rejected. You don't wanna work on a project for potentially many days just to be rejected because you forgot to mention that it needs a specific package or you forgot to test a part of the project that airs out. Tip number three is to focus on solving the core problem first and then optimize later. This tip is so important because the last thing you wanna do is run out of time or do a bad job in the final stretch of the assignment. Many of these assignments will usually have a obvious core problem that you have to solve. In your head when you're reading the prompt, you may think to yourself, oh, I could do it X, Y, Z way, but it'll take three hours longer. Save those ideas until the end when you know that you have the core problem solved first. For example, going back to a project to develop an API that gives me random facts, the core of the assignment would be to have a server hosting the API, and I would be able to make get requests at slash API slash facts slash random, and then I will receive a random fact. Well, maybe initially these facts could just sit in memory. This involves no database at all whatsoever. Once you have that part working, you can improve it and incorporate a database to select from a table of many thousands of facts now. Essentially, just take it step by step before jumping to the optimizations because you don't wanna run out of time. Tip number four is to go the extra mile if time permits. Let's say you have accomplished all of the core tasks that the assignment requires, but you still have another day to turn it in. It might be beneficial to put another couple hours into the project so that you can have features implemented that other candidates won't. Going back to a project to develop an API that gives me random facts, some other nice features might be separating the facts into different categories, selecting not only random facts, but selecting a fact in a specific category, and then you could also add the ability to select many facts at once. Adding nice to haves will set yourself apart from other people that are interviewing for the same position. If you have one person that did the bare minimum and then you have another person that did the absolute most, 
chances are the person that did the absolute most is going to be moving forward in the interview. And trust me, I know this really sucks to have to put so many hours into a project just for the chance to move forward. But unfortunately, software engineering is pretty competitive and this might be what is necessary. Tip number five is don't be afraid to ask clarifying questions. If you're given a prompt and you don't understand what it asks you to do or a certain part is ambiguous, don't be afraid to email the recruiter. Imagine if you made an assumption about what they wanted and then when you turn in the project, you just get insta rejected because they wanted something completely different. If you have any questions, make sure to clear the air as early as possible. Not being afraid to say, I don't get something or I don't understand how this works, I think that's a very good indication of a strong candidate because obviously you're not gonna know everything. I don't see any scenario where asking questions before or during the project would hurt you in any way. And even if they did for some reason dock you points because you asked a question, you probably don't wanna work there because that's not a really good sign that you can't ask questions. The final tip, tip number six, is to provide a small write-up on design decisions, examples, and potential improvements. And you should do this regardless if the company requires it or not. Think about when you're trying to learn something new, maybe you're trying to learn a new framework, you're likely gonna wanna read the documentation, look at some examples so you can figure out how it works. You wanna provide the same experience for whoever is reviewing your code, which will likely be another engineer. If you're running out of time to optimize your code or add in those extra nice to haves, this is the, pretty much the next best thing. You can add like a to-do or improvement section in your readme and whoever is reviewing your code can at least get a deeper understanding of your knowledge just through that readme. And this write-up doesn't need to be super long. It can actually be very concise, you know, bullet points, just to give whoever's reviewing your code an idea into your head as to what you are planning to do next. If you guys like my type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I try to post every single week, normally about coding interviews, but I'm gonna try to branch out and do different projects and talk about things like this. And also, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can get access to the private Discord channel. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.